Hi, my name is Alex, and in this last installment of this mini-series, I'm going to be painting and finishing the Space Marine Diorama project that I've been working on for the past little while. So, last video we actually added the base for our Space Marines, creating the cliff that they're hanging off of, the monster that they're running from, as well as the water that the monster is in. And here you can see a little bit of a turnaround of what that looks like all together. Although it was a little tricky to film just because of the shape of the sculpture and kind of my limits as far as how I can light the sculpture itself. And the way I primed the miniature was using two separate ones, not by choice really, only because my Chaos Black ran out and I had to finish priming the miniature with Adeptus Mechanicus Standard Grey. First things first, I paint the rocky cliff a grey, just mixing a little bit of brown with some black and white. I then paint the water using a variety of different colors to create a nice greenish water effect. Mixing together Vallejo model colors Azure, Vallejo model colors black, with a little bit of Vallejo model colors refractive green, and Vallejo model colors flat blue. So then I go around all of the water, painting it in a base tone of this kind of greenish blue, and then I also add a dry brush of white onto all the areas that are going to be like crashing waves, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. But the reason I'm doing this so early on is because I didn't know exactly what I wanted the monster color to be. So I paint the water, obviously, as well as the space marines first, so I have an idea of what the monster color needs to be, so that the color choice matches with the composition of the piece, making it not stand out too much or too little. As you can see me doing here, I'm painting the Space Marines a blue, because I want them to be Primaris Space Marines. And the blue that I use is McCarriage Blue from Citadel Color. I go over both of these miniatures with several coats of watered-down paint to get a nice even coating. Then add all of the grey metallics, but I realized after I had done this that I didn't want to do any more details because I hadn't done the shading yet, and I didn't want any of the shading to mess up the um, other colors that I had added. So I quickly started working on the shading, starting by painting in the highest highlight color I was going to use in all the spots I wanted to be the highest highlight, and getting this highlight color by adding some white paint to the blue we've been using. And then to create the gradient for the highlight, I add a little bit more blue to the highlight color, then water it down a little bit before I actually apply it onto the miniature. I then take a dry brush and spread that paint around, doing this over and over again until I create a nice smooth gradient. And then, of course, I go around the entire miniature repeating this process, playing around with the different levels of blue and white that I add to the paint as needed. This is always such a fantastic part of the process. It's always very satisfying to me finally getting the gradients right. I can then work on the base tones for the rest of the miniature, adding gold to the edges of the pauldrons using Vallejo model colors gold, mix in with a little bit of Vallejo model colors flat brown. The brown is really helpful for darkening the color, which is going to be helpful when we add highlights later to make them stand out even more. Before we get to that, I also add in the black that is going to be in between all of the large plates of armor. After that, I can start working on the faces of these miniatures, adding several layers of slightly watered down matte flesh, again from Vallejo Monocolor, then making sure to add some shadows to the faces. And I'm very specific with the colors that I add to this because I've tried adding black to the matte flesh and it just looks awful. So I found you have to add a little bit of flat brown as well as a little bit of orange to the matte flesh and this helps add saturation to the shadows that you add to the character's face, using the matte flesh as a way to kind of cover up any mistakes. Then adding a little bit of white, orange, and the matte flesh, I create a highlight color and try to place that highlight color on all of the parts that are extruding from the face, and of course facing the direction of where our light source is. I then add some edge highlighting onto the armor to create a little bit more interest, adding a bright highlight onto all the edges of the armor that are facing the light source, being sure to fix any little mistakes that I make with more of the McCarriage blue. After the edge highlighting is finished, I add washes over all of the metallic paints that I've added. 
and this will help achieve a couple different things. Firstly, it will help bring out some of the details, uh, so it'll get into all the cracks and crevices that's in the emblem on the Space Marine's chest, for example. The wash also stains the color of whatever you're putting it onto, so that's why for the gold I use Agrax Earthshade because it's a slight brown color, whereas for the steel I'm using Nuln Oil. And so these washes dull the color as well as get rid of the granular effect that can sometimes come up when you're painting with metallic paints. Once all of the metallic paints have dried, we can then go in with some highlights. So taking the straight gold or silver and go around the edges of all of the metallic parts as well as some of the large areas that would be reflecting light. This is a super crucial step because it makes the metallic super, super dynamic making sure to also choose certain areas on these like round parts on the border of the armor where a highlight would also be reflecting. I found that the metallics I was painting improved a lot when I stopped viewing them as kind of magical metallic paints and started actually adding highlights and treating them more like any other paint that I would. I found that they became a lot more realistic once I started doing that. So I make sure to do that on both the golds, as you've seen me do, as well as the steel colors. And then I go ahead and figure out some of the other details that I need to add, primarily the belts on these guys, which I do by adding a brown color and then putting a wash over top of that. Again, the same wash we used for the golds earlier on. Once that's finished, I add some edge highlighting and kind of scuff marks onto the leather with a lighter brown. With that detail finished, I start doing a little bit of shading onto this guy. And so what I do is I take some Nuln Oil, some of my black wash, and add that to all of the shadows and blend that out a little bit to all of the highlights. I find this is a quick way of darkening your shadows without actually having to put any washes over top of your highlights if you already like where they are. And after that's finished, I just have a couple final details to add, like the eyes for the character, which I actually, for the pupils of the eyes, I actually do that with a needle with a little dot of paint on the very end. And then I also add some of the other smaller details like the hair on this guy, adding a brown color and then doing a quick little stipple and dry brush with a slightly lighter brown, as well as some of the details for the handle uh, for the chain sword that this space marine is wielding. And after that, we can start painting the monster. So the color that I chose for the monster was going to be a deep green because I thought that that would be a really good transition color between the kind of slightly green blue of the water and the more bright blue of the space marines. This way the monster wouldn't draw too much focus away from the space marines which are kind of the centerpiece of the diorama but still stand out from the water and the rock. As you can see here, I used some of Vallejo model colors refractive green and black to make this color. Then I start adding some highlights, uh, adding some white to that color that we just mixed and doing a little bit of glazing-ish kind of onto uh, all of the highlights for this monster. Going around to all the different parts that are going to be facing the light source that we determined on our space marines. However, in the end, this highlight was just too grayed out and dull, so I go back in with uh, some stippling of some straight refractive green that we used to make this color around where the highlights are going to be, and then I add some white to the refractive green that we had used earlier to make this significantly brighter, more saturated highlight color. I stipple that around where I stippled the straight refractive green. I'm significantly happier with how this turned out. It created a nice saturated highlight, but also because I'm stippling it, it gave it a little bit of texture onto the otherwise textureless tentacles. Then for the inside of the mouth, I go in with a purple. Rather than doing a red color, I decided purple would be better since there's a lot of blue running through this diorama and red being on the opposite side of the color wheel to green would just stand out a bit too much for me on this green monster. And this purple that I'm using is made of Vallejo Model Colors Purple, Vallejo Model Colors Flat Brown, as well as Vallejo Model Colors Black. I then go ahead and paint all of the teeth using an off-white color, which I forgot to show you which paint that was. I, I did that a lot in this video, so for those of you who do like to know what paints I'm using, I apologize. But anyways, once that's dried, I go in with some Agrax Earthshade to make the teeth look a little bit darker and grimier. 
then do something that I later regret, which is adding Nuln Oil all over the tentacles of the monster. I don't think this turned out very good, so I actually fixed that, but that is something that I thought was a good idea at one point. Although later on in the project, I went back and fixed those mistakes, brightening up the highlights, but I forgot to film it, so sorry about that. Either way, as you can see me doing here, I take a black and go around the entire border of the diorama. Then I take uh, several different uh, tones of highlights and do some dry brushing onto the rock to make it look a little bit more interesting and dynamic. I then go around and fix some of the mistakes, making sure all of the kind of cracks and crevices have uh, black paint in them. And I also decided that I wanted to redo these teeth because they were kind of lazily done. So I redo the, so I repaint the teeth with the base color I had added originally. While the paint is still wet, I take some brown and I kind of create a gradient going from the base of the tooth to the tip of the tooth. This helps make the teeth look more natural as well as kind of giving them a little bit more interest than just being one color. I then decided that the rock I had made was too bright, so I add a black wash around the entire thing. Then I go back over top of it with the highlights, since after adding that wash, a lot of them kind of disappeared a little bit. Also make sure I add brighter highlights where the light is coming from onto the rock as well. And then to finish the project off, I add a little bit of paint to all the parts that don't have any yet, any places that I missed or anything like that. I'm really happy with how this project turned out, especially for my first proper diorama. I think I've tried to do it in the past, but I haven't actually finished it. It just turned out super, super well. The water looks fantastic, and as you might remember in the last video I mentioned, I didn't know how that was actually going to look. I'm really happy with how this the painting for the Space Marines turned out as well, like the golds I think look really good, and the monster itself of course is awesome, and I'm just I'm super happy with how this project turned out. I don't know whether this is going to happen, but uh, you can go to my Instagram and you can see the, any news uh, for the competition that I was making this diorama project for. But nonetheless, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. Also, don't forget to comment with any suggestions for future videos or questions you have about miniature sculpting. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.